Warning, images in this video may disturb big spiders. As many of you may know, I've had a huge problem because my home is infested with giant spiders. Because there are so many spiders, I also have a lot of wasps around. I know for a fact that wasps are perfect spider killers, and I was always curious to capture the time they did their killing spree of spiders. The wasp in this video is a mud dauber, and it packs the paralyzed spiders into the mud cell so the wasp grubs can feed as they mature. This video captures the final cell wall manufacture and the endless stream of paralyzed spiders brought back to the mud cell. All this happened over a five hour period and was in a part of the garage where I could easily set up a camera and record this action. This species of wasp tend to be solitary and rarely do they become aggressive. Although recently I did have one in the garage which decided that I was the enemy. And it's a timely reminder that other species of wasps can be very dangerous and highly aggressive. When these wasps are creating these mud cells, there is a very distinctive and quite audible buzzing sound that goes on. Normally these cells are in fairly difficult to reach areas and quite often in dark and recluse areas. The frequency at which the wasp gathered the mud and came back to do some construction was anything between 5 to 10 minutes. And to save time, I'll accelerate the construction time so we get to the spider killing spree. Well, in this process that we're looking at where the wasp is making the mud cell, I've sped the process up five times. And when I looked at this footage in real time and analyzed the way the cell is built, she takes a lot of time to make sure it's exactly how it should be. Now, she would have been working at this all day long. I'm not sure if she built the other cell, which is above the one she's building now, because I'm not an entomologist. I'm sure someone out there can tell me. And all I know is, if you or I were asked to do all this building work in one day, then go on a killing spree in the afternoon, we'd be pretty tired. But this wasp does it without even raising a sweat. Well, the construction work is done for now, and now it's time to bring paralyzed spiders and start packing them into the cell. What was interesting is, with the first catch, she went in backwards and stayed in the cell for some time. I edited out this time, and it was about two minutes, but I wonder what she was doing inside for those two minutes. The other very interesting thing is, once this paralyzing killing spree started, the frequency of her going out to find a spider and returning to the cell was anything between 20 minutes to half an hour. I think the longest time period was about 40 minutes. And remember, this video is compressing a total time frame of around 5 hours. I'll be honest here, I was very surprised in her speed and efficiency in finding what she needed to pack the cell with. She's proven to me she's the most beautiful spider killer that I've got around the house. So who's keeping account of the paralyzed spiders here? You know, a little while back I did produce a video asking the YouTube community for suggestions in controlling spiders in my house. And what was very impressive, I was overwhelmed with a ton of suggestions and there were some really, really interesting and alternative ways to do spider control. Some people suggested spraying lavender on the walls. Other people suggested sprinkling talcum powder around the doors and windows. Many people suggested the very simple fix of burn your house down. Even more suggested dropping a nuclear bomb on the house. There were suggestions of smoking out the house with eucalyptus leaves. And a few people suggested, well, you just call the pest control people. But there was one suggestion which stuck in my mind and I thought it was very clever. And that was to introduce praying mantises into the house. I was told that praying mantises were very, very good at cleaning up spiders. And I'm pretty sure I could live with the thought of having these types of insects in the house. Put it this way, the thought of having a few praying mantises in the house is far better than a nest of wasps. As I said before in the video, I am not an entomologist. But I'm hoping that there's someone out there who is, and they can identify for me the types of spiders that this beautiful wasp is collecting. 
considering the problems I've had with Huntsman spiders in the house, there has to be Huntsman in this hall of spiders for the wasp cell. If I have the same spider infestation over again, the real horror months for me will be March, April and May. Remembering that Huntsman generally have around 200 offspring, and sure, not many of these carry through to be full-size adults. So let's say if I had three nests which hatched around the house, I'm looking at 600 potential little nightmares who want to try and get back inside. I know one thing for sure, there's plenty of food for this wasp and others like her around the house. By the next day, the wasp had closed the cell up and packed more mud around both cells. I can only hope when these young wasps emerge, they grow up to be as efficient killers as their mum. Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye.